Now that you know how to compute both the arithmetic average and the standard deviation, let's take a look at what those statistics were for different investments over the, uh, over in the past um, 70 some years. So for small company stocks, remember that the, it has the highest average return and it has a standard deviation of 32.5%. And for large company stock, the average is return is 11.8% and the standard deviation is 20.3%. So you see there's a fairly consistent pattern of a higher return is associated with a higher risk. Uh, the exception is long-term government bond. Government bond has a higher arithmetic uh, return, uh, has, actually has a higher risk than corporate bonds. Um, but when you compare, and part of the reason is that government bonds typically have even longer um, maturity than most corporate bonds. So there are a lot of government bonds that are, are 30 years. Um, so compared to that, um, corporate bonds have a slightly um, shorter um, maturity. Uh, compared to intermediate bonds for corporate bonds, intermediate government bonds has a lower return and also has a lower risk. And as you can see, T-bill, in theory, if it's truly risk-free, the standard deviation should be zero, but it's actually very, very low. You can see that for, uh, compared to the inflation, US T-bill actually has a lower standard deviation. So we use this as a proxy for risk-free, even though it's not totally risk-free, it is the lowest risk investment we can find. Uh, another way that you can look at risk and return is distribution. If you look at the distribution of, a, of this investment, you will see that the wider the distribution, the higher the risk. So you can see that for small stocks, the distribution and the range is very, very wide. And um, if, if you imagine any year, um, there's a probability that a return can occupy any of these um, bars, there are, uh, pop, uh, there, they can go as high as over here 90% in one year or as low as losing, so negative 80-60% per year. On the other hand, if you invest in T-bills, is very much close to the center, so you don't have a whole lot of deviation. So it's, 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 very, it's lower return, but you are fairly certain what your outcome will be. Your outcome is basically in this few very narrow band, whereas small company stocks, your return can vary over a much wider range. So these are two ways that, or three ways that we can look at risk, uh, so standard deviation and range. Um, another way to use the sample statistics to use mean and standard deviation to help us um, understand the relationship between risk and return is to assume a particular distribution. Um, we're gonna use this normal distribution as an example. The normal distribution, um, the same uh, give us a basic principle of how to use these numbers. If the actual di distribution for stock return is not normal, we can use a we will use a different distribution, but the method to interpret that is the same. So um, the normal distribution may or may not be the actual distribution for stocks, but it, um, the, the uh, principle behind analyzing and using the mean and standard deviation is the same. We'll use the large company stock as an example. So remember these two numbers. So write this down on your notebook. So the arithmetic mean for large company stock is 11.8% and the standard deviation is 20.3%. The way that we can use the normal distribution is because the probability associated with a normal distribution is very well known. The mean, remember that for the large company stock, the mean or the average is 11.8%. So that is, that's in the center of the normal distribution. For the normal di distribution, we know that there's a 68% probability that the return in any given year will fall within plus and minus one standard deviation. So what that means is, 
any given year, there's a 68% chance that the return will be plus one standard deviation means the mean of 11.8% plus one standard deviation. Remember that the standard deviation for large company stock was 20.3%. So that give us 32.1%. And minus one standard deviation means 11.8% minus 20.3%. And that give us minus 8.5%. So this is where the minus 8.5% and 32.1% comes from. So the way to interpret and use this is in any given year, there's a 68% chance that the return on a large company stock will be somewhere between minus 8.5% to 32.1%. So in other words, there's a fairly good chance that you could lose money because the 68% of the time, um, your return could be within this range. And for the normal distribution, there's an, um, on any given year, there's a 95% chance that the return will be plus two standard deviation or minus two standard deviation from the average. So the average is 11.8%. And we know that the standard deviation is 20.3%. Remember, we, we want to write that down. So what this means is that in any given year, there's a 95% chance that we'll earn the average 11.8% plus two times the standard deviation. So two times 20.3 is 40.6. So altogether, they give us 52.4. So that's where the 52.4% comes from, is the average return plus two times the standard deviation. The same here, minus two standard deviation means we take the average of 11.8% minus two times the standard deviation, two times 20.3 is 40.6, and that gave us minus 28.8%. And then lastly, for a normal distribution, we know that at any given point in time, over in a given year, there's a 99% chance that the return will be between minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviation. So pause the video now and go ahead and see if you can compute this number can, to make sure that you know where the 72.7% and the minus 49.1% comes from. Another way that you can use the normal distribution to help us understand uh, risk is to change the question a little bit. So let's say there's a 95% chance that your return is going to be plus and mi minus two standard deviation. What that means is that 95% of the time your return is going to be somewhere in this range. Okay. What that means is 5% of the time your return is going to be outside this range. So since you have both the left and the right, so 95% of the time you're going to be in the middle, 5% of the time you're going to be outside, so that means 2.5% of the time you're going to be up higher than the upper bound, and 2.5% of the time you're going to be below the lower bound. So one way to interpret this is that there's a 25% chance that in any given year you're going to lose more than 28.8% if you invest in a large company stock. So if my question, if your question is, well, what are the chances of me losing one third of my investment? So one third is about 33%. So your chances of losing one third of your money in a given year, if you buy large company stock is less than two and a half percent. So that's not a very, so that gives you a, a sense of the risk of investing in stock. Uh, so again, if you want to make it big, if you want to double your money, for example, 100% return, um, what are the chances of that buying a stock? The answer is very, very low because 99% of the time, your return will be between plus or minus three standard deviation. So if 99% of the time is going to be in, in here, this is the boundary, 
that means you only have 1% chance to be outside of this boundary. So, and it's both sides. So 1% means that on either tail is only half a percent. So it's less than half a percent chance that you can, you're gonna earn more than 72.7%. .7%. So doubling your money, meaning earning 100% return is a very, very unlikely event. So to put it into perspective, here are some of the largest one day drop. So this is not per year, this is one day um, in the past since 1909. And um, 1987 was a very famous day in the stock market history. But if you, that's one day drop of minus 22.6%. You also want to keep that into perspective. Because for the entire year of 1987, the return on the stock on the large stocks is about 5%. So you can lose 22.6% in a day, but the stock market for that year actually averaged to 5%. Um, on the other hand, um, October, the year 1929 was a lot worse because for the entire year, so these are the one day loss on those two days, for the entire year of 1929, the stock market lost 8.3%. So again, these are one day versus um, the, entire, um, the, the entire year. Um, similarly, more recent um, that we know, again, this to put things in perspective, 2008 uh, registered two of the worst return, um, minus 7.8% in one day uh, on October 26, October 15, and also um, December 1st. However, for the year, for the year 2008, the stock market lost 36%. So that's the difference between run, one day versus one year. Um, so this gives you some perspective on the, uh, the on the degree of risk and the potential return in investing in stocks.